Farah. Farah Storr is the um, editor of Women's Health. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, just wanted to ask you, um, Women's Health magazine launched in 2012, initially as a quarterly magazine, but from next year, it, excitingly, it will be monthly because it's been so successful. Why was the magazine launched and what are you doing that's so right? Um, well, the magazine, Women's Health, the brand has been around for seven years now. Um, and there's, we actually call it the world's fastest growing women magazine, which is actually correct. There's, um, there's 23 international editions now, and that's growing every single year. Um, there were always talks about it launching in the UK, but um, obviously, as you know, it's a difficult time um, in the magazine world. So the proposition that we went in with, which I think is, is probably the key to our success, is that we were going to combine a health magazine with a lifestyle magazine. So even though the name on the tin, so to speak, is women's health, and health and well-being and fitness are at the core of what we do, um, when you flip through the magazine, you'll find you know we do 17 pages, 16 pages even, of fashion, and that fashion is actual fashion uh, related to body shape. Um, it's not gym wear. Um, we do 12 pages of beauty, which is unrelated to um, fitness or exercise. Um, but probably the thing that I think has made the big difference and is the reason why um, we're going monthly next year is because, you know, with most magazines now, the information in magazines, you're competing with the internet where people get content for free and they can pretty much find everything. Um, with Women's Health, because, I mean, it is a labour-intensive product, one thing that we do is everything's backed by science and everything has, um, I like to call it the tip density. We have two tips per paragraph, which means basically we're not just providing readers with information, we're saying, look, here's this beautiful house in West London, here's five ways which you can go and buy it. And I'm pretty confident that, you know, if you were going to go on the internet and look for all the information that you could get in one copy of Women's Health magazine, you'd be pretty hard-pressed to find it. Um, next question I wanted to ask you, Farah, was it was the only paid for women's lifestyle magazine which grew this year, August ABCs. Um, you've kind of talked a little bit about the mix of content, but can you talk through like the regular features that you do? Yep, so we have what we call, which is an American model, buckets, which is at the beginning of the magazine, we will have um, an Eat Smart, which is essentially our nutrition section. We will have a Best Body section, which covers anything to do with health and fitness. Um, we do sex and love. Um, and we do style and beauty. Then at the back of the magazine, which again is a very kind of American model, we have all of our features. And the features, these are not regular, but they will always fall into the categories of an in-depth health report, an uh, eight-page fashion story, which is related to body shape, a beauty story, which is based on science. Um, but yeah, in terms of regular content, we don't as such have any columns or anything which is always regular. We're always trying to change it up. And that was one of the things that was quite, um, we decided on that because we were firstly quarterly and then bi-monthly. But going next year, moving forward, um, there may be, you know, watch this space, there may be more regular um, pages that PRs can look to and, and pitch ideas to. Excellent. Um, talking about content, obviously um, PRs want to contribute to some of that content wherever possible. Have you got any top tips for PRs in terms of how best to approach you with some ideas or press releases and content ideas? Yeah, uh, email. <laughs> always best. Um, we're, the thing with Women's Health, and I always try to explain this, is that it is really a tiny, tiny team. And one of the things I always say to PRs is, if you can back it up with a study, so if you have a product on, I don't know, milk, if you can find a study, and I'm not talking about a study done by the milk company, I'm talking about a study which was maybe done by Stanford University two months ago. Um, if you can pitch it in that way, so say, I've just seen this story, here's our product which actually adheres to this um, information, then that is, that's going to be really seductive for us because that's what we spend a lot of our time looking for, is not actually the products, it's the studies. Excellent. Farah, I read a lot about the tone of um, Women's Health magazine. It's light-hearted, irreverent, without preaching to readers, which is very different to your competitors. Can you tell us a bit more about your readers? Uh, yes, yeah, so our readers span from kind of 18 to, um, to mid-50s, so uh, there is always a uh, challenge of reaching such a vast kind of audience. Um, the idea behind um, having that kind of funny, irreverent tone, uh, I mean actually it's something, you know, all of the team actually are genuinely quite funny, I would like to think quite funny people, and that's kind of deliberate because when you're dealing with a lot of these, as we were talking about academic journals, you've got to make something which is essentially quite dry, quite fun, 
um, to read. So that's always, you know, we always go in, first of all, have you got the science behind it? Have you got the tip behind it? Does it read well? And then the last kind of dusting on top is, can you make it funny? Um, would be the very last thing. And we try really, really hard um, to do that.